Hey, ya uh, YouTubers, Tazman here, bringing you another episode of Foundry VTT from the ground up. And uh, a couple things. One thing I decided to do, I, this wasn't initially going to be what I wanted to do in this episode, but we are going to still do what I wanted. This is the Game Master Edition, by the way, forgot to mention that. Um, so uh, what I wanted to do is enable something that I've been asked about. Uh, and that's having the audio, vi audio video capabilities uh, that say Roll20 does where down in the bottom corner there's the little box that has your camera if you want it and microphones so you actually have a way of playing uh, completely you know using just Foundry. Now there's actually two ways to do this. Foundry actually has a native built-in capability of, of uh, doing that but there's a little setup not very hard and the other one is, I think it's called Jitsi. I think if we go to add-ons, I don't, I think there's a module called Jitsi or something like that. Um, and then you actually have to have this Jitsi account thing, uh, J-I-T maybe? Yeah, Jitsi WebRTC client. Uh, but for this one, you actually have to have a account with uh, the Jitsi website and stuff like that. And it's, it's better so the the two differences are if you do Jitsi basically all your audio and video is being channeled to a central uh, server and then being passed down to each of your players so there's less less stress on systems uh, with the built-in native way of doing it basically whoever is hosting the server uh, if it's local or if it's a, a third-party hosting that is actually having the server on it and everyone's connecting into there and has to you know send it out to everyone all the time so it's just a little harder on systems if you have a poor internet or a, a less powerful computer then you might have to go the Jitsi way but definitely check it out see if it seems to work do a, a session with your friends and stuff see if it seems to have issues uh, I haven't seen any real issues with it so let's go ahead and talk about how we do this so the first thing you do is you launch found, uh, foundry of course and then you come to the configuration tab so right here it says SSL certificate and SSL private key in order to get these uh, and, and a lot of people when they hear SSL certificate oh that's scary that's that's hard to do it's really not that hard to do so we're gonna go ahead we're just gonna have this pulled up and we're gonna go to a web page called self signed certificate.com and I think I've already been there on this system just to make sure it pulled up and everything so here's self signed certificate.com you'll be greeted with this little page lots of words and stuff like that but you don't need to worry about any of that uh, basically, all you're going to do is where it says www.example.com, you're going to change that to L-O-C-A-L-H-O-S-S-T. So localhost, and you're going to click generate. There you go. That's it. Well, not completely it. Uh, then you just click these two links. We have localhost key. It's going to download it. And localhost cert. And it's going to download that. All we have to do is after that close this uh, we can go into our foundry VTT now there are two places that that you have your files usually in my documents it'll stick a foundry VTT this is for your worlds your personal data and stuff like that in your program files uh, is where the other one is and this is actually the program itself this self-signed certificate thing goes into the data files. If you don't know where that is, in Foundry you can find it rather easily on the configuration page. Just go up a little ways and you'll see right here it's in C Users Tasman Documents Foundry VTT. So all I have to do is follow that path or you can even just copy that, Control C, uh, minimize that, open up a window, click in here and do a Control V. Did it do it? Hello? <laughs> do a control V, hit enter, and it will take you right where you need to go. 
Uh, so you want to take these files and put them both in the config directory. Depending on your browser, in this case I was using Chrome, uh, right now it's set to put all files into my downloads directory. So if I open up another window here and go to downloads, you'll see we have those two keys. So we're just going to copy those and move them, or I guess not copy, move them into this directory. Now all I have to do is choose one of them, localhost cert for example, make sure you grab the entire name, hit control C, go into your foundry, and on the cert, the certificate, go ahead and hit paste. Oh, I didn't, apparently it didn't keep it on my clipboard right. Uh, so go here, go here, go here, control C. Sometimes clipboards can be finicky. And there you go. So this is the cert. You'll know because it says certificate. The other one is the key. And that obviously says key. So if we go here, go back here, click on this once and then a second time. Uh, control C and Control V. Well, that is all you have to do. Now you're able to have uh, audio and video in Foundry. You just hit save. It'll say I need to restart. You hit yes. It's tricking you because I have yet to see it actually restart. Did I hit? Oh, I didn't hit yes. Hit yes and it will go ahead and exit but I haven't actually seen it restart. So then double click your foundry icon again. We can minimize that or close it, whatever. Wait for foundry to come up. I'm pretty sure I double clicked it. Task manager, details. Yes, we have foundry in there. So it's just taking a second. This is on a VM that's not hosted on my, uh, that's hosted on my main system that I usually record on. So now that we have that, we can come in here. You can see it's all still in there. Um, anytime you're in this screen, I always go through and click update to make sure everything says it's current because I like to keep everything current. There you go, current. And then come into our world. We're going to launch the world. And now we're going to talk just really quick about how to actually enable it. So now I'm going to be Tasman. I don't think I have a password on that one. Yes. Let it load up and here we are in game now. So in order to enable the camera, now this might or might not work. I'm gonna warn you right now, because my camera is on my actual system and we're in a VM, this is not necessarily gonna act the way you're gonna see. I'll let you know if it doesn't, plus we'll probably see it. But if we click on the little cogs here and go to configure settings, the second option right here under core settings is configure audio and video. Just click that. Wait for it to pop up. Then you come here and you see enabled audio and video. You can have audio only, you can have video only or audio and video. We're going to turn on both and hopefully I see my camera end up turning on when I hit save changes. We're going to go over to devices. It looks like it already has my camera right there. Uh, audio devices, I'm just gonna leave those as the default. I don't think it's gonna matter because I'm not gonna be able to transfer sound from my VM to my main system because I haven't got that enabled. That's kind of a pain. Um, and then of course server, you don't have to really do anything here. This is just saying, do I want the signaling server to be the foundry server or a custom server? If it's custom server, you're gonna need to know a URL, server username and password i believe this is for jitsi like i said i haven't done that if there's a relay server same thing right now it's provided by the signaling server which is the foundry one other words you can do a custom and this will be the relay for the audio video we're going to go ahead and say save and it's going to restart and hopefully my camera will turn on there it is hey look now of course because this is going through my um my stuff, you can actually see my green screen and a cabinet right there and my microphone <laughs> on the side there. So you'll have three options with this guy right here. One is you'll be able to click on, I believe it is uh, this guy right here to change the size. Right now it's as small as it goes. 
this is as big as it goes. If you have multiple players, that can definitely take up a lot of valuable real estate. So I would recommend, you know, not using that, but it's your choice. Then you can change it to medium or small. I usually do small. Um, I've said this before, I'd like to say it again. Everything looks really compressed on this screen and that's because I recorded it roughly 1280 by 720. Uh, it's a little larger because it's a VM window and it also does like the start bar and stuff like that. But it's it's roughly that size and that way everything's not so small on the screen that you can't see it. So there we go. We have that running now. If you want to get to the uh, this uh, settings again, there's a quick shortcut just by clicking on this right here and there you go. It pulls up. Uh, the other options I didn't mention is you can set it so that voice is always broadcasting. You can set it so voice is activation. So when it when you talk, it will it'll sense your voice and then it will pick up microphone. Or you have push to talk. If you do push to talk, then you can also set what key you want for push to talk. All right. So also in here, you'll see we can mute ourselves. This shouldn't mute. I don't think this will mute us at all. Uh, but we can mute ourselves in the thing. We can block people's voices so we can't hear them. Uh, and then, of course, we can turn on and off the video. It will always show you the little icons. You know, if you're muted, that you can see right here. Oh, yeah, I'm muted. I forgot. Video is kind of obvious, if you ask me. If you got a black box there, then obviously your video is not working. The other option you have is right now, this is just kind of sitting here. You can actually get rid of the players window here. If you click over, it'll overwrite that because I guess I was saying, hey, you could just say these are the players right here. Uh, however, if you do that, you lose that capability of right clicking on your player name and uh, telling it that you want to change whatever settings. So uh, you can always click on that and bring it back. Then I can go here and say user configuration and such. Um, so that's those. Then there's this guy that pops it out. So this just puts it out on the screen um, and doesn't, does it actually let you, yeah, you can't change the size once you've done that. Oh, but you can there. Well, that's kind of nice actually. So you can pop it out there and then you can move it wherever on the screen you'd like. Uh, so it's out of the way, something like that. However, if you have, you know, party of six, it's going to go, you know, this long anyway. So uh, there you go. We'll go ahead and pop that back in. And go back to small. All right. So that is what I wanted to talk about with the camera. We're going to go ahead and disable it because we really don't need to watch me and my ugly green screen behind us. Um so I'm going to go ahead, go into configure settings, and we're going to disable it. Assist, oh, whoops. Configure audio video and disable. And there it goes. <coughs> so anyway, really easy setup. Even though it's SSL certificates, which usually will scare people because you know you have to set up security and encryption and all that stuff it actually is doing um, all of that for you other than getting the certificate itself so the thing i really wanted to talk about in this episode is one we've we've talked about getting your game ready so that players can join however we haven't really set up any security or permissions and stuff like that other than the basics um, but also we don't have any maps or in this they're called scenes uh, scenes will be able to have a map be able to have story attached to it you know through a journal or something like that so we are going to uh, pull in a scene um, or a map and we're going to be talking about that so we're gonna click on the scenes here and we're gonna go ahead now just like uh, a book for example you know with chapters and stuff you can set up your scenes with folders so that like chapter one scenes or if you have a big city that they're visiting such as Baldur's Gate uh, you could have all the scenes within there or even subfolders so you can have a folder we'll call this the parent parent you know and then you can have inside there another folder called child or you know this so this could be the big city this could be um you know uh 
points of interest, poise, right? Uh, and then you can even have uh, inside those other folders and you can change the colors and all that stuff. So you can really kind of organize your scenes how you want them. You know, you can have points of interest, you could have taverns, um, dungeons and stuff like that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just delete these. I'm just right clicking on it. I can click delete all or I can remove that folder. Say yes. Um, if I want to remove that one, I can say delete all and it'll go ahead and get rid of everything. So we're going to go ahead. We're not going to have a folder for this because we're just going to do a single scene. We're going to go in here and we're going to call this scene. Um, let's call it, uh, let's just do the tavern in, in uh, Baldur's Gate, the elf song in. The elf, I think it's one word, elf song. So something like that. This really isn't the elf song in, but uh, it will allow me to show you what I want to show you. So as you can see, here's the scene name. If you change it here, it will change it here. Also, once you actually attach a, a map or something to it, it will actually put it as a thumbnail background, which is kind of nice. You can make it so that only the GM can be there and that he invites people to it. Or you can make it so that all players are able to go to this anytime. So, for example, if you have a world map that shows your whole world, you might set that as, as something that anyone can go anytime. Whereas, you know, if it's a dungeon or a specific thing, I don't want to have that. I only want that there when I tell them they can go there. When I dismiss them from it, they cannot go back, right? Uh, so, like, if they're exploring a dungeon, get halfway through... Uh, you they want to go back to town real quick or something uh, and then come back you can control that saying well yeah you're not going to go there while everyone else is back at town just to explore so there's that uh, the navigation name this is what actually appears up here if I wanted it to be more like an unidentified object excuse me an unidentified object such as you know a ring of power but I just want it to show up as ring so they don't know as much information for example, if I have a map that has, you know, um, Tiamat's Lair, and it's called Tiamat's Lair, but they don't know that's where they're going, I could name it Wilderness, for example. Or I could say Building. And once I save this, you'll see what they'll see is Building. However, I still see Elfsong Tavern or Elfsong Inn. Is it Tavern or Inn? I'm not sure. Uh, so the next thing is your actual image. So there's a foreground image. This is usually using the Z layers and stuff like that. So you can actually have roofs and things like that that uh, can uh, that the players can kind of interact with or go through and under and stuff like that. Uh, and then you have your background image, which is usually the actual map. We're going to go ahead and I have one. Uh, in here and before I go there I want to show you these two options right here we have user data which is the stuff that is located in in our case it was where I said the user data was the core data is pointing to the program files directory and stuff like that so if we go there we actually see all the built-in type of stuff fonts icons language scripts sounds all that fun stuff is there if we go to user data, this is basically our worlds. In fact, if we go here, I believe, and go out to data, you'll actually see this is the exact same spot. Global assets, modules, systems, and worlds. Our world is the bare bones one. That's what we did. And I created this folder here called assets. And inside it, I populated it with audio, images, maps, and tokens. And I just grabbed a bunch of random stuff. So we're going to go to worlds, we're going to go to bare bones, and we're going to go to maps. Now the map I'm thinking of is this very specific one. Um, I actually did it twice, and the reason I did that is, one, I regridded it so that the grid will kind of match up more to the natural grid that's on the map. Uh, but this is the original map. Um, I use a program called MapAlign. If you'd like to know more about that, let me know in the comments below and I can do a, an episode on that. I think I've done one in the past. I don't know if it was on the Foundry one or on the Fantasy Grounds, but I believe I did it on there, or maybe I even have it under like some called the Utilities or something. 
Uh, but if you're interested, let me know and I can show you a little bit of how to use that. It's not going to go through everything because it has lots of different features and options, but it will at least let you get to the basics. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and click on the Foundry 50px, uh, 23w, and 16h. Now this is important because when I save it, it actually automatically does this. I'm going to just write this down real quick. So we have 50px. This is the size of the squares. Then we have 23 on the width of the squares. And we have 16 on the height of the squares, I believe. So if we set those settings as, as our map down here where we do grid uh, right here, it should actually line up everything right out of the box. Where, in other words, you're kind of setting offsets and things like that. These, these are actually not the size of the things. These are, these are the offsets. So it's 23 uh, on the width off offset and a positive 16 on the offset. So let's go ahead. We'll go select the file. And if we save this, you'll now see that it will update our thing. You're changing the dimensions. That's fine. So now you can see it actually gives us a little uh, kind of background of this map. And you'll see here, there's our little map. Now this is the actual Song Tavern. This is just a uh, one that I found. And I'd like to point out that these are not actually squares. Uh, but I'm still going to kind of align our grid to that as much as possible. These are not all the same size. So let's go ahead, click on this again, and continue on our thing. So we talked about foreground. This is the scene dimensions. As soon as you load it, it will automatically populate these. When you have a new scene, it actually says like 4,000. If we say create scene, uh, test, you'll actually see it does like 4,000 by 3,000. Uh, delete and that's why we got that little thing saying hey this is different than the the settings you have do you want to keep the ones you had or do you want it to be this and that's why it's doing that this padding percentage is how much space we have on the outside if we set this higher we'll have more space so tokens can actually sit here if we have less space so if we set it say 45 and go save that you'll see that this space grew considerably larger. Uh, now we have four, four blocks there and six blocks there. If we go back in and change it back, say down to 0.5, it should only have like one block all the way around, I believe. And say yes. So players will not be able to, you know, if I do zero, it's going to be right up there and players won't be able to have their tokens outside of the map itself. So uh, let's go ahead. Oh, wow, we're at 22 minutes. We gotta hurry. Um, let's go ahead and just leave it at about 25 is fine. <clears throat> we don't need that. We can also change this background color, which is this right here. Uh, right now it's this gray, which is selected through this guy right here. So it's 999999 in uh, hex code. For RGB, the first two are your R value, second two is your G value, and the last one. So red, green, blue, and that's basically FF would be 255, um, white, or wait, white would be 255 on all three, red, green, and blue, and black would be zeros. If we come in here, you can actually see those values as you move over. So here you can see zeros for black, you can see that for white. They're somewhere around all nines. So if we come in here and go 999999, we get the same color as they have there. Actually, I guess I missed it over just a little bit. Uh, so then we have our grid, and this is a definitely important for your thing. Maybe we should save it real quick before we do that so it re puts in our padding. So now you can see that border is actually a little darker. All right, so now we have our grid. And as I said, because we used uh, map align and it put those things in there, we know the values we need. If we do 100, those grids are gonna be really big. So we wanna set this to 50. We want our, uh, da -da -da, our horizontal, which is your width, I believe, to be, what did I say it was? Where did I write that? Do, do, do. Where did I write that? Oh, there it is, uh, 23, 
So if we go 23, and then our vertical will be uh, 16, or height. Then a distance, this is how much distance are you saying each square is. This is for the game, so when I move a token, it knows, okay, when I'm mapping it, it knows that each one is five, and we're doing units in feet. You can change that if you want. Uh, our grid color is gonna be black, and we can change that right here, so it's zero, 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 and our opacity on the grid is 0 0.02. If we go save that, you will see now we have a grid. Now, like I said, because we did what we did, it's not 100% because this isn't, these aren't actual squares. This is not the same size. I and mean, you can actually see that one goes bigger. Uh, these are not straight lines. But in a nutshell, that is what you do. If you do find that for some reason it is off, we can go back into our thing here. We can click on this little icon right here, the ruler, and this will give us advanced settings and make our grid nice and bright. So if we wanted to say, well, it kind of seems like I want to add maybe a little to just bring it closer here. And you'll see like this one's really good. This one's not. This is a terrible map to use an example, but I just want to show you how to use it. So let's say we're looking at, let's look at this square right here next to the table. So if we wanted to move it over, we might say, oh, let's try 28. And a nice thing about this little pop-up, if I move it over here, it will update the screen. So as you can see, now over here, we're just barely off. Let's try 30 and click in this cell. And now you can see we're pretty much on there, but now we have, uh, I was using this one down here, which isn't gonna work anyway because this square is not a square. But uh, now if we need to go down a little lower, we could, uh, I think this is gonna go up actually. Let me just double check. So if I do that, I think that's gonna go up. Yeah, it's gonna move the map up, which moves us down. So you can see it's, it's a little closer. Let's maybe try 25. And that's yeah, close enough for government work. So here we can also set the different thing. We can change it from squid, uh, from squid, from squares. We can do gridless. We can do oxid uh, hexagons, uh, where uh, it's rows or odds, evens, all that fun stuff. Uh, I rarely use that because D and D usually use squares. Once you've got it, how you want it, you hit commit, hit yes, and now you've updated your grid. Let's move on down to vision and lighting because this is one of the really cool things about uh, uh, Foundry is the visions and lighting. So this first one's the token vision. If you have this unchecked, that means tokens should be able to see everything everywhere without any issues. Now if you have walls, it's probably gonna stop that. But if you have that checked and you make it dark, all of a sudden a, a token's only gonna be able to see immediately around it if it has dark vision or if it's holding a torch. Fog exploration is talking about when you turn on the fog of war, basically everything is completely black around the token will be lit up. If they move over here, usually they'll be able to see kind of a ghostish image of what was there minus any tokens. They would be able to still see, you know, this table even though they're out of the range, you can disable that so that when they move out, it's completely black everywhere they've left. Unrestricted vision range, that's kind of self-explanatory. You know, reveal all areas that are controlled by tokens, have direct line of sight to observe. If disabled, vision is restricted to illuminated areas. So if I have torches and stuff like that. Darkness level, this is how bright the map currently is. Right now it's at 0.5. This goes from zero to one. So if we move it to one, you just saw it get dark, uh, lighter. If we move it there, you can see it get darker. This would be kind of the ghosty image I'm talking about. If I move out of it with a token that has light, uh, I would still see this instead of pitch black. Let's go ahead and move it back where it was roughly. Uh, then we also have the vision limitation threshold. So as you can see here, this, uh, if you check this, it automatically, dis, uh, automatically disable the unrestricted vision range setting when darkness level um, of the scene exceeds the threshold value. So this is gonna kinda 
override this guy up here. So if we have this checked and we have this guy on and we do this, you know, about 0.45, as it gets darker, I don't know if it'll do it here or if I have to do it here. As it gets darker, well, this is just flipping it, you can actually see it undid that check. And that's what that's talking about. Plus, I didn't save it, so I guess it wouldn't do it. So that's some of the vision stuff. Then we have ambience and atmosphere. Uh, you can attach journal notes. So if I have journal for this Elsong Tavern, you know, if there's multiple rooms, 1A, B, 2, whatever, uh, you can have that and you can actually link those to a journal by just clicking here and saying, I'm connecting it to it. Uh, you can also have it so when you're on this map, it will automatically play a song or a playlist uh, from your audio selection. Uh, so this will be the playlist that it, it can choose from. So all the songs that are in there, this would be the individual sound in that playlist. Uh, the weather effects, I'm not sure if this is going to work very well. But there's a couple of these, autumn leaves, rain, and snow. If we do autumn leaves, I think if we save it. Do I have to unpause the game? Oh, we just placed a light. <laughs> we're, we're not there yet. Pretend we didn't do that. I'm not seeing the autumn leaves. Uh, let's go back down. 31 minutes okay we're, we're just about done uh, then this one is the initial position so if we wanted to have it so that uh, when the players come on there is an initial area that we want to show them we could click on this little crappie tool and then say we want the map to automatically be zoomed into here and you'll see it automatically puts in that information and then what happens is when the players join this it'll automatically take their vision or their map so if they're like zoomed way way in and they're like over here with their camera it'll automatically move their camera over to here zoom it out to where we had it just so that it shows exactly what we wanted them to see so i think that's probably good enough for this episode of uh the the game master we're going to go into a lot more information um, the, I don't think it was in here, is it, there was other thing, so you can also regenerate your thumbnail image, no, it's not here, it's elsewhere, I'm thinking, so we're gonna go ahead and call it good here, thank you guys so much for watching, hopefully you enjoyed, if you did, be sure to leave a thumbs up down below, that reminds me too, by the way, uh, aside from that, comment, like, and subscribe, and speaking of comments, I did get a comment from my last one, I do try and, uh, uh, you know spotlight anyone that makes a comment no matter what it is as long as it's not vulgar language or just flat-out rude uh, I will usually come in here and tell you about it so mr. means speaks John Polak Polak uh, said for the last video which actually was the player one but says another awesome video so thank you buddy I appreciate it and I'm glad you liked the video so that is it, my friends. Uh, like I said, uh, check out my other channels. Tell other people about them, my Discord and everything else. Um, and, you know, tell them about it. If they like what they see, they can sub. We'll grow the channel. It'll be awesome. And that is it, my friends. Until next time, I'll be seeing you later. Bye.